tonight is a new one, Total Hook Clarity. So one day I was at the farmer's market and I saw two stalls right next to each other. They're both selling apples, right? Really good apples, tons of apples here in Canada. And one of the stalls was using a hook, right? Whereas the other stall was just, there's no hook. It was just apples for sale. That's it. But the guy on the other side had a sign out front saying free apples, right? And there was a big crowd of people in front because everyone loves free apples, right? And so um, if you liked his apple, he'd tell you a little story about his apples, how he grows them, how they're organic and how they inherited his grandfather's property and all this stuff and super good soil and grows the trees with love, blah, blah, blah. And then like when you fall in love with the idea of these amazing apples, because you just tasted a free one, uh, then he makes you a little deal on buying a little bag, excuse me, or a big case, right? And by then, by that point, like you're already pre-sold. You already like really want to buy them because they taste so damn good. But then he like, you know, he steals your heart and makes you want to um, buy them even more. So uh, he was crushing it. The guy was crushing it. And then it made me realize that the free Apple method works the same way with social media. You got to hook people with an image or a video because everyone's scrolling. Everyone's scrolling on Instagram, on YouTube, on Twitter, on Snapchat, or TikTok, whatever. Everyone's scrolling. And it's the hook, either a video or an image, that's going to stop them from scrolling. Once you hook them with your image or video, you can tell them a little story in a caption form or a video form, whatever. And then you make them an offer. And ideally, Ideally, you're using the freebie funnel method where you're sending them to a free offer. Like for example, this total offer, sorry, this total hook clarity class is going to be a free offer um, where I'll just make a video about hooks and thumbnails or whatever. And I'll say, if you guys want more information about learning how to put out great hooks, go to total hook clarity and get the free class, right? So it's make, making a free offer. So what is a hook? A hook is an attention grabbing asset, all right? Um, and the mindset you got to have around hooks is that if I can get people to pay attention, I can get them to pay money. If I can get them to pay attention, I can get them to pay money. Nobody pays money unless they pay attention. If, if, if someone walks by and they don't pay you any attention, how, the po how could they possibly hand you money? Like a homeless person, okay? If I don't see, not that I give homeless people money. And I'll talk about that in just a sec, why I don't give homeless people money. Actually, that's an interesting hook title. Why I never give homeless people money. That should be a, a title thumbnail. I used to give people homeless people money. I used to give them, and that's changed. I started giving them the fruit and stuff. But then I heard a message from a really, really rich guy. I think it was in the science of getting rich, Wallace D. Waddles. He says to never give homeless people money because what you're doing is you're paying them to do what they do. You're paying them to stand there or you're paying them to sit there and you're rewarding them for their behavior. He said, what instead to do is to um, offer to help them in some way, offer to help them to get out of their situation in some way. Maybe offer to um, give them a job or maybe offer to give them a book about mindset or about um, how to get healthy or how to get off the street or something. Maybe offer them to go to a shelter or whatever. But he talked about how you know you shouldn't give homeless people money because it just rewards them for doing what they're doing and they can stay there and keep making it. They can make like 100, 200 bucks a day just asking for money. Um, cause there's so many, so much traffic going by. Right. So if, but the point is if a homeless person can't get anyone's attention, then he's not going to get any money. Right. I'm sure you guys have seen actually post a one in the chat. If you've ever, posted two in the chat, sorry. If you've ever seen an image on Instagram or YouTube or, or Facebook or somewhere where you see like a homeless person holding a sign, it's like a really funny sign. Like maybe this sign or, or a really profound sign, like saying like, I don't want your money. I just want change. Right? It's like a really deep sign. Like, I don't want your money. I just want change. Or another sign. Um, I saw actually a hitchhiker holding a sign one time. And it, it was like a split screen. And one hitchhiker was holding a sign saying um, Jacksonville. He's trying to get to Jacksonville. And then the other hitchhiker, in the other picture was the same guy holding a different sign saying, um, heading to my mother's for Christmas dinner. He's holding that sign. And the, on the bottom was like the guy holding the sign saying I want a Christmas dinner was like the marketer and the guy holding the sign saying Jacksonville is just like the noob. So um, it's all about getting people to pay attention. If, they can, if you can get people to pay attention, then they can pay you money because they're going to want to then learn more from you. So um, with Tash saying that she just found me on Instagram, like had I not caught her attention, she would not be in the inner circle group. She would not have taken total funnel mastery. Um, everyone else, Jack, Brett says he's been following me for a few years. Had I not caught his attention initially, he wouldn't have been able to sign up for the course, right? So if people can't pay attention, they can't pay you money. This is the essential mindset here. Um, and 
the other the second piece of that mindset is obscurity meaning like people not knowing who you are obscurity is the biggest obstacle to making money online type a type a three in the chat if you think that kim kardashian or whoever who's who's forget the typing of three who's super famous on instagram right now okay cristiano ronaldo kim kardashian um who else is super famous on instagram like millions and millions of views jay-z beyonce okay um eminem who else um who's super famous bieber okay bieber thank you thank you exactly okay how many of you guys type of three if you think bieber kim kardashian cristiano ronaldo could um sell this um uh sell this cup hold cup protector table protector what's it called the little coaster for like 500 bucks by saying it's their custom freaking plate holder cup cup holder what's it called coaster Yeah. Okay. Everyone says, yeah, they can sell. And the reason they can sell is because they're not obscure. Everyone knows who they are. So more people who know who you are, the easier it is to sell things. And if they don't know you, they don't flow you. So hooks are all about getting people to know who you are. So you might want to first, what are hooks? Hooks are scroll stoppers. We talked about that. It's when people are scrolling, you need to get them to stop and actually pay attention. And it's a different mindset putting out content with the intention of like, how do I stop people's attention? How do I stop people from scrolling? So you don't need to do this every time. You don't need to obsess about it and do it every single post. But if you're trying to build a business, you're trying to build a brand, you're trying to get people onto your program and check out your webinar, then you're going to need them to stop scrolling every now and then, get their attention, and then tell them about a cool offer, a cool situation, or a cool thing that you're doing, or a cool story that you want to tell them. So today I posted, this was like how, uh, maybe like, oh, it says right here. One hour ago, I posted this picture. This picture right now is crushing it um, Instagram. It's crushing it. It's like normally, okay, for perspective, for perspective, um, this picture got 108 likes, okay? Not a hook. It's just a picture of me on the track. 108 likes. 100 likes. I get 100 likes on Instagram picture. I don't have a, I mean, I have 30,000 followers, but I don't have like, a ton of engaged followers. I just have a hundred likes for a photo, you know, a photo of me. Whereas this, and that picture was posted a few days ago, this avocado has 400 likes already. 400 likes. It's really weird. Um, oh, there we go. Okay. There we go. So, uh, I kept hearing like some audio in the background, someone on the bottom there. So the avocado picture got freaking 400 likes just because I, I knew it was going to work. Tash liked it. Yeah. Um, so, and the reason I posted it is because I was going through like my, my, um, it's funny why I post that before coming on, creating this class for you here tonight, I was going through on Instagram, trying to find a bunch of examples of, of hooky pictures, pictures that are scroll stoppers. And every now and then I, I recommend you all do this. Every time you're on Instagram from now on, anytime you come across a picture that stops you from scrolling, click save, save it. That way you can go back and check it in the future. Um, and get, uh, it's, it's like your hook archive. It's like a hook library. You have a collection of ideas of what works. So I was coming up for some pictures here today for you guys. And I was going through my archive and I came across an avocado picture. As soon as I saw the avocado picture, I was like, boom, look at that one. I was like, wait, that's mine. I posted that. So I reposted it again because it's so damn good. Turns out my friend Glenda took the picture. And do you know how difficult or how, sorry, how much, how much money it would cost to, to take a picture like that? If you were to create it yourself. Uh, these are, how many avocados would you say that? This may be like, um, how many avocados is that? Like maybe like 12 avocados at the most. Okay, 12 avocados. That would cost you like maybe 15, 20 dollars to take that picture. You invite a bunch of friends over, make some guacamole. Actually, we don't do friends anymore in real life. It's corona season. So um you could just have like a freeze them, make make a sauce out of them or something, do something with them. But that picture would cost you 20 bucks to make. It's not not expensive and it's a really great hook. So um Hooks are scroll stoppers. And here's an example of a Casey Neistat video that clearly I watched a while ago. And it's a straight up hook. Like him and his wife are in the thumbnail. She's looking kind of like sad as she always kind of does. And Casey's kind of looking a bit sad too, maybe. And the title is just so profound. It's like, this is the end, period. All lowercase. I was like, oh my God, are they getting a divorce, right? And so I clicked. 
And it's a complete hook. Casey's good at that. Here's another great hook, right? I don't know what the hell it means, but it's just like, well, that's really, really cool. Um, so hooks are to catch attention and make you want more. They're either, okay, hooks are either sexy, or another word for it is beautiful. Okay, here are some examples. The avocado one, that's super sexy, right? Or beautiful. Um, picture of myself, which got the most amount of likes ever. I'm only posing this picture because it got the most amount of likes ever on my Instagram. Average Instagram of mine gets 100 pictures, right? Look at the difference. This picture of me on the track, actually, you just saw that. Picture of me on the track, 100 likes. The picture of me on the screen right now, 1,500 likes. Got 15 times more likes just because my looking super fit. Um, this picture, super sexy, right? She's underwater in some dome. It's so beautiful. It's a scroll stopper. You, you're scrolling through Instagram. You see that. You're not going to want to skip through. You're like, whoa, what is that? Looks so cool, right? Um, this too, like, what? Is that even real? That looks so beautiful. So hooks are either super beautiful like this or they're scarce, something pretty rare. So like this, like another Casey Neistat video, like human flying drone, what? A human flying drone, that is insane, right? I didn't think it was real, it's so, so scarce, super, super rare. Um, that video is legit AF, by the way, if you click it, you'll see the thumbnail is totally legit. Dude flies over a truck on a snowboard with this human-sized drone, it's so awesome. Um, this is a, is a weird one, right? It's scarce, it's re really, really weird. It's a guy named Sam Ovens, uh, huge, huge, um, He's the owner of consulting.com and he puts out different ads all the time. And this is one of his most uh, famous ads. The, the picture at least he's used to make millions. This picture alone has made him millions of dollars. This is the ultimate attention grabber for Sam. You don't see this on Instagram when you're scrolling that often, do you? A big lime green box with different social media icons and uh, overweight uh, guy's face. or I mean, He enhanced his face to make him look overweight with his name poor on the shirt. Like that's something you don't see every day. So super scarce um, and shocking as well. So hooks are shocking. So here's a picture of a shocking one. Uh, I remember seeing this one for the first time. I was like, what, that is so crazy. Look at that, super, super shocking. And how much would this co picture cost to, to, to take? Well, I don't know where that train even is, but um, you, just gotta, you just gotta do shocking things, not necessarily risky, like this is super risky. Um, well, I don't know, maybe the train was stopped. But point is, you do crazy stuff like, and, and take a picture of it and you get a, you get a good hook. Um, do, or do some Photoshop. You, know, you could even hire people on Photoshop to do Photoshop work for you. Uh, but this is a pretty easy Photoshop, actually. They just took a picture of an egg at the top and then they cut the picture in half and they have the guy's head on the bottom. So it's just shocking, right? It gets you to stop scrolling. And um, the point is like, you don't just put the picture up, right? You, al you always want to have the freebie funnel method in mind where you're using the hook story and the offer. So you have the hook, then the caption, you put the story and then under the caption or within the caption, you have an offer. Usually like, okay, click the link in the bio to get the free thing. So hook story offer, it all really works together. Once you get their attention, then you can tell them what to do. Uh, here's another one of Casey and I said, snowboarding with the NYPD, super epic. Again, like, Casey's the king of like not even being <laughs> clickbaity either. Like it looks super clickbaity. It looks like that's not going to be legit, but it's super legit. You watch the video, he's freaking skiing and snowboarding with the NYPD. It's insane. It's in New York and it's snowy four years ago. Um, hooks are also scary. You see something really scary. Like, wow. Like something that makes people, whoa, like they feel, feel, feel something, right? So here's, you know, Jaws, Shark, the big circle around, like boom. That's pretty scary. Um, oh, I had some other examples. I just didn't post them. But uh, if you guys want, I will post a shootload more examples of all these different types of, oh, here's one. I don't, I don't know why I didn't show up. Here's another one for um, shocking. Boom, right here. Bunny going uh, skydiving, pretty shocking. And uh, yeah, there was some more scary ones, but I'll, I'll post a, a big catalog of them all in the inner circle group on, in the, in the ClickFunnels membership area. So that'll be there as well as in the Total Funnel Mastery group. So question you might be wondering right now is how do hooks differ from just a piece of content? How do they differ from just a piece of content? Well, the purpose of a hook is used to get, people's, get people to consume your content in the first place. So the content, people think like posting a picture is content. Well, it's part of a content, but the real piece of the content that matters is the story. 
right? The, the, the hook is just to get their attention, but the story is what's going to convert them to actually want to go check out the offer. So hooks differ from just a piece of content because they're used to get people to consume the content in the first place, which is your story. Um, so keep that in mind. You're just using hooks to get people to check out the story so they can go to the offer. Uh, where do you post the hooks? You can use them in ads if you're going to run ads in the future, um, Instagram posts, thumbnails, YouTube videos, intros, like the first like two seconds of a video, the first sentences of your caption. So whenever you, so if you have a good hook picture, make sure the first sentence of your caption is also really good. Also, really, we'll talk about how to, how to get that. We'll talk about how to create these first sentence hooks uh, in just a few slides here. But um, as well, in addition to just, in addition to the first sentence of your captions being hooks as well, very, very like wanting to draw people in more, the headlines of all your funnels as well should also um, be hooks. So every page on a funnel should be using the hook story offer as well, hook story offer formula as well. So whether it's the landing page or the uh, thank you page or the upsell page or whatever, or the downsell page, Make sure you're using hook story offer and the, the headline is where you'd put the hook. Um, opening line of a speech. Opening line of a speech. Watch this. This is so cool. Um, what would I type in? Um, how do I find this? What's, what's that? Uh, speech award world. Um, what's that company called where they do speaking? Um, they help train speakers. Ta table something? T Toastmasters, thank you. <laughs> I was reading her lips. Toastmasters. <laughs> this guy is so good. Watch his hook, okay? Um, uh, champion, I think he is. Huh. It's 2017. No, it wasn't that guy. Come on. His hook is so good. Oh, it's a young kid. Oops. This guy, 2015. Okay. Check out this hook. Please welcome our next contestant. Mohammed Kwatani, The Power of Words. So how to get people's attention, okay? The Power of Words, Mohammed Kwatani. So he hasn't said anything yet, right? Watch how he opens his speech. So gold. What? That's it. Like, you, you people are instantly, you know, drawn in. Didn't even say a word. He just takes a cigarette on stage, starts to go like, imagine if someone did this at a fruit fest, Karen. Imagine, imagine if Dr. Doug Graham goes up on stage, takes a cigarette out and just goes to light it. You know, it's like he has your attention now, right? If he didn't have it, he now has it. Uh, if someone's like turning down on the phone and everyone's just laughing, so they're all going to look up and look at this guy, right? So now he goes into his speech and the rest of his speech is gold. This guy is a, a world champion. So I recommend checking out some of the world champion uh, Toastmaster speakers, learning a bit from them. But uh, that, that was his hook. So that's the op opening line of his speech was one of those examples there. So question for you now is when you're posting your photos on Instagram, ask yourself, is this going to stop the scroll? Like when I posted the avocado picture, I was like, this is going to stop the scroll. I knew it would. And, and, and just by asking that question, you're so much more likely to put out better quality content or content that's actually going to stop the scroll, actually going to get people to check out your story, check out your offer. Um, so just think, is this going to stop the scroll? Yes or no. And you don't need to stop the scroll every single post. Like some of my posts, they get freaking like 80 likes or 50 likes. Like they're just kind of lame photos for most people's opinion, but I just wanted to put it out there for whatever reason. So um, you don't need to obsess about this, but the more you do, the more attention you're going to get and the easier it's going to be to sell your stuff. So keep that in mind. Um, the question, second question I ask yourself when it comes to your thumbnails on YouTube um, is, are people going to want to click on this? because it's the thumbnail that people decide to click on. The, the title, sure, gets them interested, but it's like the thumbnail, like, are they, is it gonna, 
are people going to want to click on this? And same thing. It's like with, with, with YouTube, um, not saying every single video needs like a crazy thumbnail, but the more you think about it, the more likely it is you're going to get people to watch your videos. I just went through today earlier and I looked at my top 25 most viewed YouTube videos ever. And every single one of them had a customized thumbnail. Not one of my top 25 videos was just like a random screen, screen share, screen shot from the video. They were all customized thumbnails. They were intentional to get people to say, I want to click on that. Right? So obviously it's a combination between the title and thumbnail, but you, the thumbnail needs to be just as good, if not better than the title itself. Okay. And there are proven ways to, to, there are proven titles out there. There are proven thumbnails out there. We're not going to go into that here today. You can just go on YouTube and see what's already crushing right now and then just do similar things. And if you're wondering how to make a thumbnail, canva.com is where it's at. All right. Um, now you might be wondering, like, how do you actually come up with the hook? Like, how do you just come up with a hook? You're staring at a blank screen. Okay, what's, what's the hook going to be? Just think of the story that you want to tell first. Think of the story that you want to tell. And then go to the brutal before aspect because the hooks are going to live inside your story. If you're wondering how to come up with a hook, the hook is inside your story. So look in your story and you can pull it out. So a great place to look is at your brutal befores. Um, so in your brutal befores, you know, you, a brutal before... If you've gone through total story clarity, if you worked with me before in total fun and mastery, we talk about the brutal before quite a bit in that like a brutal before is it's all bad. It's all shit. It's not like, oh, like um, I was kind of annoyed that day because um, there was no oranges at the farmer's market. That's not a brutal before. A brutal before would be like, look, there was no oranges at the entire farmer's market. And I was on day five of an orange juice cleanse and I needed to do seven days to heal my cancer or something and you're like i just needed two more days but i couldn't do it because there was no freaking orange at the farmer's market and um i was afraid of the cancer was going to like reemerge or something right so something like that some, something scary so brutal before is um here's some examples like i was fat sick and nearly dead okay that's a brutal before and that can be an opening sentence in a caption i was fat sick and nearly dead and then go into your story right so that's that's a hook from a brutal before um i couldn't afford food for my child dot 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 talk about that like what, how is that possible? How can you afford food for yourself and not your child? It doesn't make sense, right? But you could talk about how like, you know, you were overseas and you were so freaking broke that you couldn't afford to send money back home um, because you yourself were homeless. Like you couldn't afford food for your child back home. Like something crazy like that, right? Um, and obviously it has to be true. You're not going to make this up and be like, oh, that's a great one. I'm going to use that. Like I was just quickly brainstorming some ideas before making this presentation here, but you want these to be truthful. You want these to be honest. Um, you're not going to make up a lie saying you couldn't afford food for your child when really your child was well fed. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> Another one would be something like my wife left me and I lost my house. Like that's brutal. Your wife left you and you lost your house. Like now I, who, who feels kind of emotion? Who feels like some, some bit of emotion when they, when they read that, I feel a little bit in my stomach when I read that, like my wife left me and I lost my home. That's brutal. Like I have empathy there. I don't even know who this person is or, or anything, but like instantly I feel, um, I feel em empathetic towards them. Right. Or her. Um, but yeah, there's definitely some emotion there. So the brutal before aspect is to get people to, um, to empathize with you. Cause when they can empathize with you, when, when, when your story becomes their story, then your offer becomes their solution. And that's why it's so important to have an emotional story. It gets people to relate. And anyone who's ever lost weight, it's, it's other people can really, really relate with you. Right? So talking about when you're, how you were fat, sick, and nearly dead, when you were at rock bottom, or if you couldn't afford food for your child, like that's insane, or when your wife left you and you lost your house. When people can relate with your story, then your story becomes their story. And your offer becomes their solution. Because they could be at your brutal before. They could be at your rock bottom right now, right? And your offer um, is the solution for them, potentially. So uh, an, a, great web, a great YouTube channel that has a lot of awesome hooky thumbnails is Goalcast. Look at this one. Mike screamed, grenade out, jumped on it, and boom. Like, that's a hook, right? That's a freaking hook. That is a hook. Such a strong hook. The first time I saw my dad cry. That's a hook. It's like, ooh, it really paints a picture, right? So Goalcast, man, they're full of all these hooky thumbnails. Go check them out. Um, another one is, I said yes when I wanted to say no. Like, 
I don't know what the heck that means. I can only assume, right? We can only assume. Um, but the point is, it paints a picture, right? It paints a picture nonetheless. So the other way to take the hook out of your story is to not just focus on your brutal before, like that, that rock bottom point, but to also focus on and pull out of the story your resolutions. So how to X without or Y. How to X without Y. Right? We've used this combination before quite a bit in the past, um, talking about webinar titles. Um, Brett, what is Brett's, we'll talk about Brett's um, webinar title that got over 100 people, I believe, signed up. Get, unmute Brett here for a sec. Unmute. So Brett was able to get over 100 people signed up to his webinar, his live webinar, with one day notice, okay? 100 people signed up with one day notice, and the title he used was? How to lose weight quickly without restricting calories, even if you don't exercise. How to X without Y, even if. Boom! Dude, 100 people clearly <laughs> interested. Now imagine if your webinar instead, Brett, was like, um, how I did my juice cleanse. Oof. Yeah. So boring, bro. Yeah. And yet that's pretty much all you talked about. You talked about like how you did your juice cleanse, how you crushed it with the juice cleanse. But you, you don't want to say how I did my juice cleanse. That's a horrible title. But how to lose weight without exercise, even if you hate exercise? What was it? Something like that? Uh, how to lose weight quickly without restricting calories. There we go. Even if you don't exercise. Love it, dude. And the cool I love, thing I love about that title is that it seems impossible. The titles that seem impossible are the best because you're like, huh? How is that possible? And so when you said that title, when we were brain, you and I were talking on WhatsApp the other day um, before your webinar and Kara was in the room and when you read your title, Kara looked at me like, like, she's like, that's not <laughs> possible. That. Like, she's like, that's not possible. And I'm like, perfect. That's the reaction, right? That's the hook. You hooked, you hooked her. She was, she was on her phone, right? And she heard you read the caption. She's like, put her phone down. She's like, that, that's awesome. That. So that, yeah, the hook works, man. Good stuff. Very good stuff. So that's the how to X without Y method. Um, and it's basically, if you want to plug and play, how to result without what you don't want. And I have like dozens of examples of, of these I can show you. Uh, they're called, I'll save that one, webinar, um, title, webinar title swipe files right here. So I got dozens of these, these, all these titles, right? My weird niche funnel is currently making 70 grand per day and how you can ethically knock it off in 10 minutes. Um, how we make full-time income with eBooks in the vegan niche with, by growing our Instagram organically and how you can do the exact same without needing any major tech skills, paid ads or fancy certifications. Uh, the untold secrets of becoming successful and highly profitable tradesmen in six simple steps. I didn't make any of these up. These are all ones I copy and pasted from other people crushing it right now. Um, so. Keep that in mind. Uh, where are the other ones though? Hmm, it must be in the membership group. Uh, titles. Yeah, they must be in there because Brett's should be on here and Karen should be on here and mine should be on there. Yeah, but these are, these are anyways, these are um, examples nonetheless of how to X without Y, right? How to compile the crap out of your course with no uphill battles, no struggles, just fun and freedom, right? Free mom method, how to make money from home, how you can quit your job and replace your salary in three months. Cool. So those are some examples. Um, now back to here. You present. Now, so how to incorporate this into the freebie funnel method? Well, so with freebie funnel method, right, you have your social media value, which is your Instagram post, your YouTube post, your Facebook post, whatever, you got your value. And then within each piece of value, you have the call to action, meaning, hey, go check out my free thing. Go check out my free thing. Go check out my free thing. Type a, type a five if you do not get annoyed ever by people giving you free stuff, like free valuable stuff, like free swipe files or free video courses or free eBooks. Like, do you ever get annoyed? I, I don't ever get annoyed personally. Type a five if you never get annoyed by free stuff. Like, yeah, if you love, basically, another way to say, if you love free stuff, type a five. That's what I should say. If you love free stuff, type of five, right? So you're never annoying by using the freebie funnel method. You're never being salesy. You're just saying free, 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 free. Um, so social media value proves to people that you can help them by you actually helping. Them. That's what the social media value is all about. It's you're making content that's genuinely helpful. 
You're proving to people that you can help them by actually helping them. Once you do that, then you can easily say, hey, if you want to learn more, if you like what you just learned, go check out the free guide. Go check out the free course. Go check out the free masterclass, whatever it is. Have the call to action. That sends people to your freebie offer, your freebie funnel, right? Then you offer them a little upsell. Hey, do you want the audiobook version? Hey, do you want the deep dive course version? Whatever it is, it's a little upsell, maybe $2, maybe $7, maybe even $47, whatever. So for example, the uh, Traffic Secrets book I recommended you get start, right? I said go to bit.ly slash Secrets. That sends you to a freebie funnel. And it's a free book. Well, you pay shipping and handling, so it's not completely free, but it's kind of free. But you get a uh, book in the mail. And all you do is pay shipping and handling. It's really cool. Um, so it's a kind of a free book. And then on the next page, they upsell you on the audio version. Uh, and then by that point, you're on their email list, right? As soon as you get the freebie, you then get added to the email list, whether you take the upsell or not. So now that you're on the email list, um, well, let's back up here. Because the social media value, you need a hook. The freebie funnel page, you need a hook at the top. So let's know, like, hey, click enter, or sorry, enter your information below to get the free thing. You got to hook their attention. On the upsell, you have to hook their attention by saying, wait, order not complete. Do not close this page. Do you also want this? Okay. So you have upsell, you hook them on there at the top. In the emails, what is the hook aspect of the email? What do you guys think? First one to get it wins an invisible prize. What is the hook of the email? Who's going to get it? Subject line. Thank you, Brett. Brett's been doing his homework. Uh, Karen says, I love free stuff, but sometimes they can overwhelming in my inbox. Yeah, but you still love free stuff. So that's cool. Tash says, I moved them to my junk. Okay, cool. So um, you still see them. So that's, that's cool. That's a start at least. Um, subject line. Yes, Brett. Exactly. So I have for you guys and girls, 101 of the best subject lines I found around the internet and in my own inbox, plus ones I made up and tested. This one recently I used, it crushed it. Nobody showed up, sad face, super deep. I wish I had the screenshots actually to show you guys like the open rates. Usually an email from me gets anywhere between like 10 and 20% open rate. But when I use subject lines, like the ones on this list, they get like uh, 30, 40% open rate. Like these are really, really good uh, emails to use. Probably one of the best ones is this one, but you can only use it once a year. Bad news, that one. Um, it's powerful. Nobody showed up it is powerful. Final letter. This one did really, really well as well. Um, this one's pretty good. <laughs> Do you hate me? Name. Do you hate me? Brett? Do you hate me? Karen? Tash? Do you hate me? Right? Like you're gonna, you're gonna probably open that. <laughs> so these are uh, all hooks right here. And these are all in your membership group. So check them all out. Um, now back to the slides, mm. present, cool. So emails, we have hooks. So, so far we've seen, we have hooks across the board, hooks on social media, hooks in the freebie, hooks in the email, hooks in the email, or hey, hooks in the upsell, hooks in the email. And then the webinar, what was Brett's title? It was how to lose weight quickly without calorie restricting, even if you hate exercise. It's such a hook, I even have it memorized. All right, he has that on his webinar page that says free live class. Enter your name here to reserve your spot. Um, that hooks them into the webinar. And then you have your courses. And the way they used to use hooks in your courses is to title your module something really, really catchy, really, really sexy, really, really um, desirable. You know, like uh, rather than just having a course called, a course module called like um, how to do a push up, it'd be more like, like how to create a chiseled chest from home without any equipment. Like, I want a chiseled chest from home without any equipment, that'd be epic, right? That sounds way better than saying how to do a push up. So, using hooks in your course modules uh, as well is a really, really good idea. So, here's an example of a few. So, the, uh, this is for my plant based revolution summit where I interviewed 11 other plant based entrepreneurs so this is my hook i said meet your teachers pbrsummit.com it has a picture of like all these semi-famous vegans um these classes are epic af and you can't find this info anywhere else that creates scarcity this is a vegan niche specific stuff and you're gonna get so much out of it for free 
free. There's that word free. Link in the bio for Taryn, right? Okay, boom. So people see that, they're hooked, they go to the link in bio, they see this on the funnel. Want to turn your passion for health and be into full-time income? Meet your teachers. This is the hook. Meet your teachers. And it has like really well-known teachers, bloggers, uh, plant-based enthusiasts, etc. Okay, so that's the top of the funnel. Once they go in that, boom, they get this on the upsell, another hook. Wait, order's not complete. Do you want a 30-day done for you business plan made by each teacher? Plus the MP3s, class notes, and bonus videos, and more. And it's con me congratulating them on getting the, the first part. And I'm upselling them on part twos and threes and that sort of thing. So this is the hook on the upsell page, right? Then uh, in the email, I forget what the title of this email was, but it was like urgent must read or something like that. And then I get them to reply to the email. This email got really good reply rates. And then I send them, eventually send them to a webinar page. Um, once they go through the whole summit, um, then I say, hey, would you like to learn how my online vegan business makes 18 grand a month without a huge following and how you can do the same even if nobody knows who you are and you don't know what to offer. Right, so I have that, that hook right there. Boom, free seat. And then this is a bad example of what to do. I'm glad I'm showing it to you. See how it says class one, two, three, four, and office hours one, two? Those are not hooks. Those are not sexy. Those are not desirable. Like, I don't want to watch class one, two, three, four. I want to watch like how to how to make my first sale within the first 24 hours. Like that, that should be a module title, right? So this is this is a great example. It's an old screenshot. I need to update um, my module titles, but uh, yeah, these are titles nonetheless, and those are places where you can put the hooks in the title name. So, um, with all that said, at the end of the day, this all the only point, the only reason we want to learn about hooks is to get traffic. And if you want to learn to master traffic, like getting traffic to your funnel, to your social media, then this is the book for you. And you can get it at bit.ly slash tedcar traffic secrets for free. You just pay shipping. And if you want the audiobook, great. I recommend the audiobook because I personally only listen to audiobooks. These books I just refer to from time to time, but it's the audiobooks that I go and listen to on my walks. So and I've ordered this book right here that you're seeing on the screen uh, three times. I'm about to order it my fourth time and go through the whole funnel and see how he's selling it. He does a brilliant job uh, with this. And this book has been so successful that they just created an entire podcast around it. It's called Traffic Secrets Podcast. If you guys are into podcasts, go check it out. And, uh, who knows, maybe one day you'll be on that podcast as well being interviewed. So I'm gonna uh, unmute everyone now and we can all share a key takeaway that we, uh, that we got from today's class. So um, we'll, start with, uh, we'll start with Tash. Tash, what was your key takeaway today? I should really start watching because I actually got a book and um, there's few, I think there's five videos there to watch. So I watched one or two. It's actually really interesting. But then I thought, oh, I shouldn't get distracted from reading yours. <laughs> so I'm kind of between watching his and reading yours. It's really well, interesting. You're talking about Russell's? Yeah, yeah. Because right, I've right. got his book and inside is um, his bonuses. Yes. Just a few videos to watch. But, you know, on your one, you'll say, once you start doing my program, I don't want you to get distracted. Go elsewhere. Yeah, well, when the hooks are so good, it's hard not to get distracted, right? Yeah. When the hooks are so good. So the hooks are so good with Russell. He's an expert at this. He's a master at it. Study, study what he does. Study how he's doing it. Um, he does talk then, really fast. He does talk fast, yeah. Yeah, really fast. <laughs> yeah, he talks fast. Um, I talk fast, but I slur a lot, too. I don't think he slurs as much. So he's, he's, he's cool. Um, but, yeah, he's the man. So, uh, Tashla, what was your what was your key takeaway of today's class? I need to um, I need to put a little more effort into everything. Like I've, I've got yeah, I need to just put more my mind into concentrating on just from beginning to start, like from to the end. Um, as far as the freebie funnel method or the hooks? Um, just everything as far as what I'm going to do. Okay. They're different pieces and I just need to start putting them together. Yeah. And I used to get overwhelmed like crazy with that because there's so many different pieces. You have the webinar, you have the email, you have the social media, you got the freebie funnel, you got the course, you got the Instagram and the YouTube and there's just so many pieces, right? Yeah. So what I ended up doing, like the way I found my overwhelm cure, actually Lexi knows this story, was um, I hired a life coach and I paid them to ask me a series of questions every day. And the one question that stood out, the one question that changed it all for me was, Ted, what's the one thing? So I'll ask you right now. Tash, what's the one thing 
not the seven or eight things. What's the one thing that you can do tomorrow that you can wake up and say, tomorrow is the day for this? What's the one thing you can do tomorrow that's going to move you just one step closer to accomplishing your goal? Just the one thing. Uh, probably just make videos. So making videos is, is, uh, is, is a lot of videos. Like, what would be like the one video? Uh, probably speaking my mind or, or I don't know. I don't know. What was yours? Well, my one thing changes. I answer that like before bed every night. It's the one question I ask myself before bed now. So when I wake up, I, I grab the sheet and I just do that one thing. Um, but today, today, my one thing that I did today was create this class today. Create the hook class. So some, some, something I want to ask yourself, what's the one thing that I can do tomorrow that will get me just one step closer and just really narrow it down. So rather than just like videos, it's like, maybe it's like get clear on that one video. Yeah. 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 Hooks are definitely, definitely important. But like, it's just, it's, it's okay to see your attention for sure. Mm -hmm. And, and here's the interesting thing too, guys. Uh, we talked about like, we talked about hook story offer, right? The whole recipe. But the way you want to actually craft it is focus on the offer first. That's why I gave the offer class first, total offer clarity. Focus on what you want to offer first. Get clear on that. Once you're clear on that, it's easy to come up with the stories around it. That's what probably, that's probably, I don't know. I don't know that one. That's right. why I'm struggling. So come up with the offers first, then the stories will yeah. rent themselves. And then you can pull the, off, the hook sorry, out of the story. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. What was someone else's uh, key takeaway today? Hooks are just super important for everything. Everything. I've noticed that in, in, in all of my Instagram posts as well. You know, the, 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 the images that get the most likes are the ones with me with just a huge fruit haul, you know, a fruit haul on a table with me in it and it just stops people in their tracks. Yep. Um, you know, versus if I have just like one glass of orange juice, people keep scrolling, you know, so yeah, just, it's, it's amazing to see how that works. So, yeah. And here's the other thing too, I forgot to mention. Okay. It's good to mention this here. The power of a hook, it diminishes with repetitive use. Mm -hmm. So, if every, so if there's a new trend coming out, I don't know what it is yet, but let's say um, the new trend. Oh, I, at first one of the trends, maybe you've seen this before, where it's a, it's a talking headshot of a person, they're talking, and the top there's a white bar with, with text, and the bottom is a white bar with text, right? Have you seen those videos? Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like white above and white below, and there's like text on the top and bottom, it's just the talking headshot in the middle. When those first came out, they were super trendy and they, they were blowing up and they're easy to consume. It does like maybe loading bar in the bottom as well, but subtitles in the bottom. Those videos are amazing. But now everyone's doing them, so they become less effective. Um, if everyone starts doing like um, backflips or something, the backflips become ineffective. If everyone starts doing fruit hauls, fruit hauls become ineffective. Mm. So you, you have to be the one like, to, to, to find like the, what's the one really thing that's working right now for your audience. Mm. And then be prepared to pivot like tomorrow because that hook may not work again tomorrow. Sure. So you don't know how many times you can reuse the same hook. That avocado picture, I can't post it tomorrow and expect the same amount of likes as I got today, right? But I could post a picture of like a shit little watermelons or something and maybe get something out of it. So you always have to change up the hooks, but um, the theme can stay the same, like an abundance of fruit or abundance of multicolored fruit, right? But the use of a hook, the power of a hook diminishes over time the hook the hook gets dull i should say the hook can get dull so keep keep sharpening your hook or uh, just use a different hook altogether lexi what was your key takeaway today one of them i think that um the photos are the hooks i don't really up to this point, didn't really know how to utilize Instagram or Facebook. And so actually it's very auspicious because today I was scrolling through Instagram and I saw the juice haul that Brett posted. And I said, what kind of juicer is that? <laughs> then I followed you. So 
Yeah, it's nice to meet you. And um, <laughs> yeah, so I think I overheard you, Ted, say in one of the other classes that you um, find most successful people post at least three posts a day and five stories. And so I'm over here scrambling like, ah, I just got to start producing something. But what's the point if it's junk and people are just going to go through it? So I'm going to be patient with myself and start creating quality Mm -hmm. hook hooky stuff yeah. and um a question that I had though is like almost like what came first the chicken or the egg should I be creating hooks now if I don't have my offer or should I do the offer should I be building my audience like what is the step right now it's a great question it's a great question so like I said when it comes to hook story offer Ideally, you start with the offer in mind. You get clear on your offer. That's why I put a oh, total offer clarity. Get, get clear on your offer. Then it's so easy to come up with the stories. It's so easy to make the hooks that are relating to those stories. Right? But if you're brand new and you have like nada, then as far as content goes, you want, you want to be putting out content every day. As far as content goes, just start putting out helpful content that you think would be helpful for people. A great way to do it would be top three tips for or or top three mistakes I made when or um, five things I see newbies do or whatever just like helpful helpful content um, and then just, just basically you're getting people to like you just in general because if people know you like you and trust you then when you finally do come up with an offer boom it'll sell so easily so from personal experience I didn't have anything to offer my first five years on YouTube, I just put a crap load of content. It was all very, very helpful stuff. Showed people into my life. It got people to know who I am, got people to like me, got people to trust me. When I finally did come up with an offer, it was so much easier to sell it because people, are, I was already a name. So you can build a name for yourself just by putting out content alone. Just by putting out content alone, you can become the next freaking Kim Kardashian, next Justin Bieber, whatever, right? And they never had anything to offer. Well, Justin did his music, but Kim Kardashian just has a booty, right? She's just got a, uh, that's her hook. So, um, just being known is very, very valuable. Thank you. Um, but, I, but I, the also, I wouldn't say like, um, not knowing what to offer, um, should stop you in any way from offering something in the first place. I love, I love, I love how you're already offering a free stretching guide. The problem I have with your free stretching guide, Lexi, um, is, and this is probably some good feedback. Maybe you can even make content around this. I was thinking like, how does stretching boost immunity? Right. And so maybe that's a video, how stretching actually boosts your immune system. Right. Because I'm like, what's the, cause to give everyone context, Lexi put out a piece of free guide. So awesome. She bootlegged her own funnel, put out her own free guide before even knowing how to do any of this stuff. She's figured it out on her own like a day. Um, the guide was called how to boost your immunity with these five stretches, something like that. Right. Yeah. And I, I saw that. I'm like, well, in my mind, I'm like, stretching doesn't boost your immune system. That's the first thought that came to mind. So if I don't believe that stretching is going to boost my immune system, I'm not going to want to get your freebie. Right. But if you made a freebie instead saying like um, top five herbs that boost your immune system or top five daily habits that boost your immune system, I'm like, okay, now I'm, I can believe that. But stretching is like, I just don't believe it. So if that's something that you want to teach people with or help them with, then you have first have to get them to believe that in the first place. So maybe you can make content around how stretching boosts immune system. And then once they're sold on it, once they're believing in it, then say, if you want to get the free five free stretches, click link in the description or click link in bio and get it free. Right. And I, I'm, I don't know about any of the rest of the students here, but I've never heard anyone else talk about stretching for immunity. So you could be like the first <laughs> to, to have that. Okay, thanks for the feedback. That's helpful. Yeah, cool. Cool, cool. Um, Karen, what was your key takeaway? Um, a lot of it, but for me, I, I know I really need to work on the thumbnails and I really need to figure out Canva. Canva. Uh, so I, I told you last time I went in there, um, it looked like you could only get a free trial for 14 days, but so I need to go back in there and see where I yeah. 
can start learning about that. Yeah, I can, uh, I'll, I'll open a new private window right now, a new incognito, canva.com. This is what you'll see when you go there. Uh, you just click right here, sign up with Facebook. <laughs> and you um, sign up with Facebook. And then as soon as you're in, it's going to work. Um, I don't, I don't, maybe you clicked on pricing or something at the top. Mm, I know I didn't click on sign up with Facebook. Okay. Well, that's the one you want to click on. As soon as you're in there, then it, it's all gravy. So as soon as I get in there, does it, does it show you like where to go to like create pictures or is it like overwhelming or? As soon as you're in there, it looks like this. Mm -hmm. And then on the top left, it says create a design. And then you just click create a design. And then right here, it says YouTube thumbnail. So it's a uh, top left, oops, 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 oops. Top left, create a design. And then as soon as you click that, you click YouTube thumbnail. And it should be like a blank slate or maybe there's a pre template. No, it's blank slate. Um, but you can just click on one of the examples here. And now boom, you have a, a thumbnail. Oh, okay. And so you just grab something and then make it your own. Yeah, exactly. You can, or, or you just start with the blank, blank slate, but yeah, I like to just. And are you able to, to just use all of these pictures? Yep. Yeah. And then after you do it, how do you save it and actually then use it like on. On the top YouTube? left, it says download and you just click uh, download. On the top left. Yeah. It Where does it download. say download? Oh, you might not be able to see because the the webcam images are there right now. But on the top right of Canva, you'll see it says download, and you just download it to PNG. I can do. I can create a full tutorial if you want. I'll put that in the um, members group if you want. Full step by step tutorial, or I can just find one on YouTube right now, walking you through how to do it. Uh, no, I'll make a custom one because I'll show. I'll walk you through in, intricate how to actually make put on YouTube as well. But um, yeah, thumbnails are, are key. Thumbnails are very important. Yeah, because I mean, I've had a YouTube channel for, for years, many years. And I mean, I do see which ones have been really effective. Mm -hmm. But there, it's not because of the thumbnail, because I didn't know how to do thumbnails. I just put up pictures. But like, you know, it was more the topic. Right. More of the title, maybe? Yeah, the topic and the title. I remember there was one I interviewed my daughter that like is like a like over a hundred thousand views or something like that. I, th I thought you interviewed Cappy as well at one point. I did. Sure, I got a lot on that. Oh, and also there was another boy at the Woodstock Fruit Festival from Canada, and I did. Um, the title was "What Raw Kids Eat for Lunch at School," and that was like. <laughs> right. And it was like a nothing video, but so many people yeah. watched it. It was just nothing. It's all about the freaking thumbnail and title. So here are a few of the top ones. Um, no fab, 365 day results. People care about results. Minimalist house tour. Minimalism is really popular. So house tour, people love that as well. After three years of not masturbating, that seems unbelievable, right? So after three years of not masturbating, here are 11 tips and tricks. Um, what's in our <laughs> fridge? People care about that. No bra, no underwear. That's a crazy hook, right? Um, <laughs> Fruitarian runner breaks three kilometer record or breaks one kilometer record. That's epic. Porter versus minimalist room edition. Whoa. How's it going guys? Welcome back. Yeah. Um, so a bunch of, these are all my top ones, like how to get a visa in Thailand, whatever dangers of fruitarianism. They're all custom thumbnails here, right? Why quit triathlon? So uh, these are just my top videos and they all have custom thumbnails. And so you think it's best to write on the picture to have oh, something. Yes. Yeah. I mean, one, two, three, four, five. My top five videos ever have writing on the thumbnail. Yeah, and you can just go to any, anyone's, anyone's, in, anyone's YouTube and just see what's working for them. So Kate and I used to brainstorm a lot about what videos would make her channel blow up. We were hanging out and just brainstorming different titles for videos. So let's start by her most popular. We grew up in a cult, dot, dot, dot. My morning routine, vegan lesbians. Morning routine, super, like two out of her top five are 
morning routines, how I lost 20 pounds. So 20 pounds is not a lot of weight for most people to lose, right? Most people could afford to probably lose. I mean, Lexi lost 50 pounds, right? And mm -hmm. a lot of people out there could probably lose 50 pounds. Kate made one called how I lost 20 pounds and it just blew up. So you don't even need like to lose a lot of weight to make it pop. Like 600,000 views on how I lost 20 pounds. That's amazing. So yeah, these are, you can just go to anyone's page, sort by most popular, and um, you'll get a lot of good examples. So, yeah, that's that. Um, everyone give their key takeaways. I'll, oh, my, my key takeaway. My key takeaway today was something cool. I had a big light bulb moment. Um, was how <clears throat> when you're telling your story, like when Lexi's telling her story about how she lost 50 pounds, the result is cool, right? Okay, she lost 50 pounds, now she looks amazing, and she can dance, amazing, whatever. But what's gonna attract, what's gonna um, actually get people to um, relate and empathize with her and actually like think like, wow, I like this girl, and, and wow, like her story is my story, is when she's at rock bottom. It's, it's when she dives deep into being at rock bottom. She talks about like their lowest part, what she was, like the, the parts that you find hardest to talk about, when you feel most vulnerable sharing, that's when people really relate. That's when people are like, wow, like it's something like when you share something that's hard to talk about, people feel like you're very trustworthy. Like, wow, she's opening up about that. Right? Brett's opening up about like I remember you talked about something was growing where the sun don't shine. I remember. I don't know what that was. <laughs> was like, you got shingles where the sun don't shine. I'm like, dude, that's gnarly, right? <laughs> that was in your webinar, right? Right. Yeah. So that's you opened up, opens up what the that part. Um, now, when people feel like your story is now their story, this was my light bulb moment, was, uh, sorry, when, uh, when other people feel like your story is their story, then now your offer becomes their solution. So if they're feeling like, wow, I really want that result, I really want to have that body, I really want to have that energy, I really want to have a healthy child, I really want to look amazing after age 40, I really want to have my dream body, I really want to be super flexible like Jen Peach. I really want to overcome this eating disorder. I really want to make money online. I want to make a full-time income online. When they, when they confirm that they really, really want that thing, then your offer is just their solution to do it. It's just that simple. It's like, okay, here's, here's the thing. Here's the key. Like, do you want to open that door? Yes. All right, here's the key. Boom. But they only get to that point if they can really feel like um, they can relate with you. And the way they relate with you is by you sharing your story. So if you're unsure about how to tell your story, I give a whole class on that called Total Story Clarity. If you want that, um, send me a DM and I'll send you a link for that. Or actually, maybe you can just go to bit.ly slash total story clarity replay. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Yay. Check it out. Total Story Clarity. Check it out. Uh, bit.ly slash total story clarity replay. And you can get a free training on the three types of stories and uh, how to tell awesome stories. So, yeah. Jen, I see you. <laughs> Jen's been going on and off. Um, I know, I was uploading a video this whole time. Oh, okay. <laughs> welcome, and welcome Jen. Uh, so Jen, by the way, helps girls and guys, I guess, but predominantly girls. No, you help women, you specifically help women. Okay. Women. So, Jen helps women uh, overcome eating disorders. Fully get... recover. I've changed it. I've oh, got okay. there. It's fully recovering from eating disorders, discovering okay. their love for fitness, and accepting a healthy body weight. Boom. I love that. Can you say <laughs> that again? Fully recovering from eating disorders, accepting a healthy body weight, falling in love with fitness. And you help and my takeaway, that. my takeaway today was the same as yours. It was like making sure that your story, if your story is their story, then your offer will be their solution. Nice, <laughs> love it, very, very cool. So Jen uh, joined, uh, I met Jen like a couple uh, weeks ago actually, it was like three weeks ago or something, maybe a month ago, I guess. And we drove home from Portland, Oregon together like 10 days after we met, that was cool. Um, we met at a retreat, um, the Healthy Wealthy Vegan Retreat. And uh, she was there for 10 days with Raw Food Romance and I growing our Instagram, that was super, super fun. <laughs> and making funnels together, so. Yeah, cool. Well, um, thanks for coming, Jen, and uh, sharing. Does anyone have any questions before we depart today? 
I do. Karen, what's your question? Um, I did not think, I, you know, I work um, at a school for autism two days a week. Yeah. And um, they're very long days, especially now that we're not at the school, all the kids are home. Um, but next week they have spring break. And so I was planning on uh, working with you and getting my webinar launched the middle of the month, like the 13th, 14th, 15th or something like that in the middle of the week. And I'm just wondering because I'll have more time next week than I will that week. What do you think? Do you think it's better for me to do it then? Because I'll have a lot more time to focus on it. Let's brainstorm this right after the call. Let's get on a quick call after this and brainstorm it because it will have to determine a little dates and what, what was going to fit for you. Um, let's, we'll get on a call right after this call about that. Okay, thank you. I know you're going to go to bed soon, but we'll make it super quick. Um, yeah. But um, does anyone have any questions about total hook clarity, what we just covered? Or any ideas, suggestions? I have a quick question. Yeah. Do the photos have to be your own? Great question. Love it. <clears throat> so three, there's three answers I can give you. I'll, I'll, at least, I'll at least give you two of them here. <laughs> just because I may forget the third one by the time I get to it. So the first answer is, if you're gonna use someone else's photo, there's a small chance they're gonna ask you to take it down, even if you give them credit, which you should always give them credit. So that avocado picture I showed you, my friend Glenda took that picture. I gave her credit. Well, I tried to, but then she changed her Instagram. So I said, photo taken by my friend Glenda, I can't find her new Instagram account. So there's that. If you're gonna use someone else's photos, give them credit but there is a small chance they get removed. But I've only had one person ever ask me to take it on their photo and I've reposted like hundreds and hundreds of other people's photos. There's never been an issue as long as I give them credit. Tagging them, I don't feel is enough. Tagging them is kind of like, I, when someone reposts one of my photos and just tags me in it, but doesn't actually like put me in the caption, I feel kind of ripped off. So I love when they say photo by Britannia, yeah. head car, whatever. Um, so but what, are, what about for like a YouTube video, you can't do that. Like if you're using um, a photo, let's say in Canva. Uh, well, Canva thumbnails, uh, yeah, you can use other people's photos. It's just kind of, I wouldn't really do that, some of those photos. I mean, these, these, are, these are royalty free. So that brings me to my next answer, okay? You can use royalty free photos as much as you want. And the website for that is unsplash.com. Hmm. There are a bunch of different websites that give you a bunch of different royalty free photos, but unsplash.com is the most reliable one. They're always updating new ones, and uh, I use unsplash.com a lot. In fact, you could grow your entire Instagram account just by reposting unsplash.com photos. You don't even need to give the people credit for them either. That's the cool thing about royalty free. You can just purely repost them. So. But for the Canva ones like these, you said that you can use these, right? Yeah, absolutely. If it's on here, then you can reuse it. Yep. And do you have to um, credit the person too? No, no. Okay. No. Yeah. Canva already bought the rights to all these photos. So you're covered. Um, but yeah, that, I hope that answers your question, Lexi. Yep. Thank you. But um, in the future, what I want to do is I want to... Um, have like a, t a team, at least one person that just helps me go around, take like really epic photos specifically for thumbnails because like you don't even really need to go around, but just like take pictures for hooks in general, take pictures for hooks for the Instagram and for um, ads and whatnot. So um, yeah, you can definitely use other people's photos, but um, make sure you give them credit or use royalty free photos. And real quick, do the hook photos have to be, related to yes love, okay. it. <laughs> love it okay so I, I was scrolling one time i saw this guy levitating and i was like instantly stop scrolling right would you stop scrolling if you saw a dude levitating yeah so i saw this guy levitating he's in meditation position like cross-legged saying like he's levitating i'm like that's epic i scroll down hoping to see him say like you want to learn how to levitate by my 30-day course i'd be like hell yeah like take my money right i want to levitate dude did not say that he's like 
he's like something like have you ever felt frustrated that like um your house doesn't get cleaned often enough or something and i'm like what what's that do with you levitating dude like he may have tied it in somewhere along the lines like like make yourself feel lighter and download this thing or something but it was a horrible connection if, if there was a connection at all i just remember feeling like ripped off that like it was clickbait you know so if it's not if the store if the picture is not related to the caption it's kind of like clickbait um it's a bit different if you're like posting like a picture of yourself like flexing like jen and then in the caption it's like here's how i boosted my confidence levels right or or jen makes a picture of herself flexing and then the, the caption's like here are my top three tips for creating hot awesome breakfasts or lunches or something because every picture of jen is her flexing so that's her whole thing so captions don't really need to match up with her flexing um but if it's a picture of avocados it better be something about avocados or raw food you know mm. <laughs> yeah definitely needs to be congruency not just with that but also congruency um from your caption to the funnel so for example if your caption says check out the link in my bio for my free stretching guide or for my immune boosting stretching guide. Then when they go to the funnel, it should say a moon immune boosting stretching guide. It should say the same thing it said in the caption. And on page one of the funnel, if page one of the funnel is black and pink that says free stretching guide or immune boosting stretching guide, let's say immune boosting stretching guide. Then the next page of the funnel should also be black and pink and says, thanks for getting the free immune, immune boosting stretching guide. Hard to say that. <laughs> Immune boosting stretching guide. Yeah. So you want congruency across the board there and then congruency in your offers as well. I see people make offers that are like oil and water. They're like, um, like they're, it's a gardening offer. Okay. They want to help you grow the best kale in the world. And then they're throwing in like a freaking cup holder. You also get this cup holder. What is the cup holder? The cup holder is not going to help me. Okay. So when you're, whether it's an upsell or whether it's part of an offer stack, make sure the offer is totally congruent with everything. Everything's all fit together. Um, it may sound like a no-brainer, but you'd be surprised at how easy it is to maybe forget that at times and think like, oh, so throw in this milk jug half full of water. <laughs> if it's not congruent, then just forget it. So, uh, yeah, those are some ideas at least. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, while we're all here, this is fun. Um, starting April 20th, which is like in three weeks, I'm going to be, um, well, I should just get you all to sit through the class Lexi sat through. Lexi knows what's up. Lexi, don't tell them the secret yet <laughs> about what's happening on Mondays and Tuesdays. But um, they, don't, they don't know yet. But uh, yeah, I'll send you guys all a class to my, a link to the latest class. Give it a watch and um, you guys will get some um, surprises about what's happening every Monday and Tuesday in addition to every Wednesday from now, from now on. So I'll send you the link. I'll send it out by email. But for now, that's it. Thank you all so much for tonight. Ted, it's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ted. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Karen, I'll quickly get on a call with you right after this. Actually, just stay on the call. Everyone else can vamos. And uh, wait, vamos means let's go. Everyone else can um, something, depart. <laughs> can peace out. <laughs> all right. Ciao, Lexi. Ciao, Brett. Ciao, oh, yeah. Ash. And goodbye, Jen. Ash is stuck on here. She's always stuck on here. <laughs> Sorry, I'll I'll mute you. Okay, so. <laughs> oh my god! That's... Okay, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's not nothing private. It's just trying to figure out what time Karen wants to do her webinar. So um, I'll ask you something actually afterwards, really quickly, just a okay. quick. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So Karen, uh, walk me through what happens next time. So you said it's April, it's April first today, and the oh. school has off, um, you know, like the days of the school. I mean, it's practically a wash on those days. I'm like, especially now, it's like I'm on the phone with teachers and parents all day long. And it sometimes goes until like late in the day. Right. Um, and I don't really get to like work on anything on Mondays and Wednesdays. And even like tomorrow on Thursday, I have a conference with a parent in the morning. So um next week they have spring vacation 
but I don't know, like, um, I feel like, you know, my webinar, I still have a couple of questions of things. Um, I had wanted to like look into Canva and doing some of those things that Brett did. Um, and then for like my recipe books, can I just do a slide putting all the pictures of my recipe books that they're going to get? Yes. That I already have on my desktop that I could just put in there. Yep, definitely. But then the other things I would have to make those and I don't, no. Yeah, I mean, if uh, if you want to get on another call with me, like um, next week, sometime when you have an hour, we can just do a bunch more work on your webinar. Yeah, and then though, should I start promoting it next week? Well, you want to promote it three days before you actually do it. So, if you so to... I would promote it like um, you said to have it on a Thursday or a yeah. Friday. Thursday, Thursday. So. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then have it on a Thursday. Oh my yep. God, that's already Monday. Yeah. <laughs> well, the promotion's not, doesn't take up your time, Karen. The, what takes up your time is like the day of the webinar, you need a good like three hours to an hour to prep and then hour to do it and an hour to wind down type thing. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I just did a webinar for like 45 minutes for plant powered Metro New York last week. And it went, went like super, super well. Amazing. Yeah. We had 50 people wow. and, um, it was great. Like I, I did put out a couple of offers and I told people, well, I did tell people I was going to have a free webinar coming up. Oh, cool. So I did already tell them that and a couple okay. of people. I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the word webinar. I would use the word master, master class. class. Master yeah. class. Something like that. Or free workshop. Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let I, I would say go for it next week. Like you don't need a lot of time Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You need a lot of time on Thursday. So, so um, would you Sorry. say then that I should just la launch it like Tuesday and Wednesday and do it on Thursday? You can start promoting it on Monday. But I would have to talk with you first, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, we can talk on Monday. Okay. We can talk, we can have our call on Monday like we used to always do every Monday. But that's, at my, that's Monday night. Yeah. So should I already be starting to promote it on Monday? And yeah, you, I don't know how to promote it. Oh, I see. Because I see, I see, I see. Okay. Well, um, let's. Um, What's today? Today's Wednesday. Do you want to have a call with me on um, Sunday? Uh, yeah, Sunday could work. Let's see. I normally do like nothing uh, on Sunday besides whatever. We'll do Sunday. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm doing nothing almost every day except for the days I'm with the school, that Monday and Wednesday. But, you know, the evenings, the weekends. Okay, so let's get on We're a call all just Sunday, sitting and we'll, inside the house, <laughs> and then we'll scheme for uh, we'll scheme for Monday's launch. Mm -hmm. And that's this Sunday, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and I don't have to start like preparing my modules or anything like that now. I mean, I have a lot on paper, but I don't have it. No, the other good. way. You're good. I'm good with that. Yeah. Okay. And, and everything else. I mean, I think I sent you things like the free ebook yeah. and the audio I had done and I have the video course done. Mm -hmm. um, that stuff, like, you know, I don't know where that goes. I'll, I'll let you know on uh, Sunday. Okay. And I had those emails, that email sequence. I think I did that a while ago. Yeah, I think those are done too. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Sunday, what time is good for you? Sunday at, um, I don't know, because Sunday is usually like a, uh, a ghost day. Um, let's do Sunday at 6 p.m. PST. That's too late for you, right? How about Can five? Can we do it like one hour earlier? Yeah, we'll do it at five. Okay. Alexa, so that'll, five will be eight at me. 5 p.m. on Sunday. What's the reminder for? Karen Ramsey. Okay. 
Sunday at 5 p.m. Sweet. Thank you. The other thing is that I wanted to ask you is that right now I'm also, as I'm sure you are, promoting the uh, Raw Mastery Summit. Yeah, I'm about, I ha I'm about to promote it. I'm going to do it tomorrow. So um, I think I'm promoting that this week as well. Is that going to... No, then... yeah, you don't want to conflict that. I would promote that like today, tomorrow, the next day. Okay. Don't, don't, don't do it next week. Do it this week. Do it all this week. Do it all this week. Yeah. Get that out of the way. Next week needs to be you. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. And then I have another event coming up and I'll just push that. I have like a, a webinar on homeschooling that I'm doing. So I'll push that like maybe to the week after yeah, the launch honestly. of this. And then you said that when I do the launch, that I actually have the, um, the master class like two weeks later. Yeah. Exactly. Or, or the course. The course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The actual course. Yeah. The course two weeks later. So I'll have to put together like the entire course in two weeks. Uh, you'll do it with them in two weeks. Yeah. And that's doable to put together that. I mean, yeah. I have lots of bits. Doing of it live with them. So for example, like Tash and you and me, let's say we're recording this class right now together. This, let's say only two people signed up for my course, you and Tash. I would teach you the class right now. Let's say only you and Tash came to Total Hook Clarity today. Well, I just recorded the whole class with you guys. And now I take that recording and then I sell that in the future. So I didn't create the course before you and Tash came. I'm recording it with you. Okay. So I'll put together what I need for the course. Yeah, just slides. Slides. Okay. And you'll execute it with the class. Because it's going to be like four weeks, four sessions. Yeah. So can I do, can I do it like one a week, work on it? Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't think I'm going to have time to do like four before the course. No, no, no. You don't do anything before the course. You just do it all with the students. You, all you do is prepare the slides. Prepare the slides and then have time for Q&A like you did. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Okay. Cool. I can't believe I've never done anything like this on my own, but I, I haven't. So this is going to be new for me. I'm a little nervous, but. Totally normal. We'll see. I was, I was super nervous too. I didn't think it was going to work when I first did it. We'll see. I'm just always thinking like, you know, that there's so many people out there who think like raw food is like really damaging to kids and, you know. Um, but there are, there are, is definitely a growing interest. I think that's a good hook right there. You put a title out right there that's called Raw Foods is Damaging to Kids. And then the <laughs> intro of the video is like, hey, everyone, I always hear people saying that raw foods is damaging to kids. Well, is it? Let's find out. And you go into your story. I'd click on it for sure. Yeah. Tash would click on that. I'd click on that. I'd share it to my friends who are raising raw kids yeah okay so that'll be a youtube video the hook right there yeah so whenever there's a opposing thoughts opposing beliefs that's a good way to step in there and be like i'll use that as my hook yeah and then i i could do the video about why it's not damaging to kids yeah, exactly okay cool thank you ted yeah thank you karen and i will see you on sunday sounds okay. good I'll before you go when you go yeah sounds good Okay. Bye. Ciao, Karen. Bye. Bye. Stay safe. Bye. You too. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Quick question. Sorry, I, I know it's holding up. Just, um, I'm still not clear on what to offer. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> real <laughs> quick, real quick. I'm still not clear what to offer. Just, just be, no, no, no. Like just because everyone's doing like they know what they like. You know, they, they've done hundred day juice fast. They've yeah, done totally. like you have to be like a master of something. Oh, a what? Sorry. Like a like you have to master something, like a particular oh, skill. Oh no! Yeah, great question. Great question. So, um, the plant-based revolution summit, for example, did you go through that? 
Don't know. Okay, well, go to um, pbrsummit.com when you get a chance. I interviewed 12 vegan no, I haven't. entrepreneurs. No, I haven't. Okay, well, check but I'm sure I've seen, them. I've seen most of them before. I've been, I've been watching. Okay. Well, point is, I interviewed 12 of them, and it's a free summit. You get it for free. But um, I interviewed 12 of them, asking them about how they do what they do. And I got a lot of really cool information from that. And mm-hmm. I didn't have anything to do with their business. I just interviewed them. And I collected all the really cool information, which I can now sell the part two of all the interviews for and the 30 day game plans and everything with them. So I wasn't a master of anything they were talking about, but I interviewed them and I acted as like the reporter, the collector of information. And then I went and sold it. I don't do that either. Pardon me? You did it though. I just asked questions I was curious about. Like the questions I asked, I kind of felt bad asking. Like it was almost like asking someone like, like, so how'd you make all that money? Give me the step-by-step plan on how'd you made the money. Right. Mm-hmm. And like, even like when I was talking to doctors, Rick and Karen Dina, they told me how they, they sell their programs for $5,000 over the phone. So I asked them like, what do you say on the phone? What's your opener? Mm-hmm. What's your script? How do you close it? And they mm-hmm. told it to me. They gave me everything. Now I have that valuable information that I can then now sell as doctors, Rick and Karen Dina's $5,000 phone sales script. As your own information, yeah. Yeah, and I get, I ask for permission, right? So I've got really valuable information, and I was just the middleman. So that's one option that you can do. You can just middleman information. The second thing you got to realize is that you don't need to master something to start helping people. And I'll give you a story to demonstrate this. I was brand new to raw foods at, at one time, like I'm sure we all were, um, just new to it, and um, I was. Uh, doing some stretches in the hallway of a chiropractic clinic and an old man walked by and he made a joke and he's like, you want me to show you how to do that stretch properly? And uh, mm-hmm. that was his hook. That's how he caught my attention. And he's just joking. And then I was like, Oh sure. And he's like, I'm just kidding. But then we got talking and we got, I got to find out I was into raw foods and he's like, wow, maybe you could, maybe you could help me. Cause I ch- told him how I eat raw. And, and just the fact that I ate raw was enough for him to say, Oh, maybe you could help me. And, I was like, yeah, I can help you. I could, I'm a hundred percent confident. I can help you. Right. Um, I'll help you make your juices, make your salads. I'll help you whatever at the house, whatever. Sure. No problem. So he ended up hiring me. He was paying me like 20 bucks an hour for like four or five hours going to his house, helping him with raw foods. And the first time I went there and helped him out, I, I left after making like a hundred bucks after four or five hours or something. And I was like, that was the easiest hundred dollars of my life. I guess you like it. I love it. Yeah. It was easy hundred dollars of my life. And who the hell am I? I'm just some guy who eats raw food, but people are willing to pay for that because they know and like me and trust me. So if people know who Tash is, they like Tash easy. They trust her probably easy because you're trustworthy. Then they're going to want to buy from you. If you have something that is a solution to their problems. Okay. So, so it's more like eBooks or, Quick e-books. meals, but it's, it's more comes down to ebooks. What else? Like well, what is well ebooks is a gr- I I don't really sell them necessarily. So I like ebooks is more free. like a freebie, right? Yeah. And then what? Okay, great question. So you give them the freebie, which is the hmm. ebook. The upsell is typically either one of two things or both: an audiobook version of the ebook. You talking or me talking? You talking with an Australian accent. Mm-hmm. And the Podcast. second up sell would be like a deep dive video course into the ebook. So for example, my ebook, Vegan Money 2.0, people bought that for free, free ebook. Can you believe it? They bought it for free. The upsell was an audiobook version. And then the bump sell for an extra $47 was, do you want a deep dive video course into the book where I break down chapter by chapter the entire book in video course form? And that was just me screen recording my screen scrolling through reading the book with them and talking going depth into each chapter and wow. it's freaking awesome because i gave way more value in that video course than just the book alone plus they get the audiobook so those are two examples of ways you can upsell an ebook as mm-hmm. far as what comes after that you could then as your like big ticket item if you will you could then offer them coaching Or you could then offer them to enter your exclusive inner circle like this, for example, or enter your, um, 
just do video course or both. So you get access to my video course and inner circle like I did with you. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's, there's ways um, of playing around with offers like that, but those are some of the proven offers right there. Okay. I'll yeah. think. Okay, thank you so much. I know it's a bit late for you. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so those, those are like the offer, the forms of offers they come in, right? The ebook, the audiobook, the deep dive, the video course, the inner circle, those sorts of things, coaching, whatever. But as far as like what you actually want to help them with, mm. that's totally up to you. And that's, that's the exciting part. Like, what do I want to help people with? Mm -hmm. And it may feel inauthentic at first. Like, for me to help people with their raw foods felt really wrong. Like, who am I to help people with their health? Mm. Right, like me the health guy. I was smoking weed a year ago. Why am I doing teaching people raw foods at age nineteen now? At age eighteen, I was like a freaking drug dealer, you know. To be like the fruit guy and the health guy at age nineteen, it was an identity crisis a bit, right? So you at age forty now. I mean, you had a history of drugs, right? So it may feel inauthentic to teach health, totally mm. normal. It may feel mm. inauthentic to teach people how to, you know, do anti aging work or whatever. When you're only forty years old, like how do you know? But who are you? Where's your certification, right? So you may have all these blocks that come up. No, I think I'm 46, so because okay. I've been in the 40s. So cool. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Okay. Um, so even better. Yeah. So you have six years experience of being 40. Yeah. So uh, yeah, cool. Uh, you get a, uh, it's a video right there. It's like after six years of being 40, here's what I've learned. Oh yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> I've never done a video, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, easy enough. Um, just uh, hit record. But yeah, anyways, those are some ideas. Um, I would just brainstorm a bunch of different things that you want to help people with, get, that you want to help people get a result in and specifically focus on the result you want to help people get as well. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. An objective result, something measurable, something tangible, not just look good in age 40. Yeah. It's a cool niche. It's a cool idea, cool theme, but like, what would the result be? Like, let's say I'm 42. What can you actually help me accomplish? Okay. I'll say, yeah. Okay. So something to think about. There's a, there's always an answer. It's just you got to come. Yeah. It's blurry right now, but you'll get it. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. Thank you. I know it's really late, so I could be an into yeah. two hours. And by the way, this this the answer to that is not going to come from you living your life and all of a sudden you're driving one day. It's going to pop in your head. It's going to come from you shutting off your internet, being locked in that, shutting the door behind you, turning off the computer, and having a blank piece of paper and a pen and just brainstorming. Yeah. Getting out all your ideas on paper. That's when the answer is going to come to you. It's not going to come from you like doing the dishes and like, oh, I know what to do now. It's like critical thinking. It's, it can be tough, but um, that's where the answers come. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, take care. Thank you. Enjoy. And you need to log out. Oh, no, no. I have to log out now. I can see it came on. I think <laughs> when this, the window goes smaller, I can actually have got an option now before it was all the way to the edges. Right. Mm. Thank Be you. Good. Okay. Good night.